welcome to day, I don't even know what day it is anymore. Is it, is it, two, are we on Tuesday now? <laughs> a combination of things has made me just completely lose track of time. Are you guys having a really great conference? Fantastic. Well, I really, really appreciate you hanging out with me this afternoon. I know by this point, your brains are probably getting a little bit crispy and fried, but I hope today I can give you something really actionable and usable. Um, the project today is 100% applicable to pretty much any content area, and um, I hope you enjoy it. This is actually a project that I was working on with students when this kind of call for presentations came through, so it is definitely something that I've done, and um, I'm I'm going to share my process with you. So movie trailers with Google Slides. So I'm Sarah Phelps. Um, my kind of journey through education so far, um, I started off in just public education. I was a fourth grade classroom teacher, general ed. Um, about six years ago, I transitioned into the computer science and STEM elementary teacher for my school district, and I did that for five years. Most recently, I have joined the Learning Technology Center of Illinois, um, which is a partner with the Illinois um, Board of Higher Ed, and we support technology throughout the state of Illinois. And we do everything and everything related to technology, from helping schools get acquire technology, get connectivity, we help with cybersecurity and with data student privacy. We also have regional partner or regional um, leads who do professional development. And then we have a set of instructional technology coaches. And we help support schools throughout the state of Illinois, um, particularly districts that maybe couldn't have a full-time instructional technology coach on their own. They don't have the funds or the means. So we have kind of cohorts of schools and they share a contract. So I was in um, three different schools. I'm in the St. Louis area. I live in Illinois, um, but I'm in what we call the Metro East. And so I was in three schools. They were very different schools. I had um, one school that was very urban. I had one school that was very rural. Um, and it was really cool to be able to support them. And I was K-12 as an instructional technology coach. Next year, I'm taking on a new role, and I will be the computer science and STEM program manager um, with the LTC. So I've got a lot of things changing and going on, but like I said, this is actually a project that I did with schools this year as an instructional technology coach. I'm Google certified level one and two, and I'm a certified coach. So the inspiration for this project, I had a teacher come to me. Um, she was a fifth, fifth and sixth grade special ed teacher. And at the very beginning of the school year, when I very f met her like day one on a um, school improvement day, kind of that back to school professional development, she said, I can't wait to work with you. And I, I already, you know, that's like a dream as an instructional technology coach, but she already had ideas. She's like, I cannot get kids to engage in our quarterly book reports. It's just not happening. They're not reading. They're not doing it. I want to flip that on its head. And I was like, that's amazing. Do you have some ideas? And she said, yes, I want to do a podcast and I want to do a trailer. And I was like, all right. Like she had a vision. And so I said, do you have a tool in mind that you want to use? And she's like, I have no idea if these things are even possible. So she was, she had a dream, but that's, that's where we, that's where she left me. So we worked together on this project. Um, she worked, she was a push-in teacher. So she had fifth and sixth grade students. They were in two separate classes. That was not a, a, a cross grade level class. She had a group of fifth graders and a group of sixth graders that were pushed into the regular class. Um, and again, our goal was to get them to engage with this quarterly book report. And so um, they were choosing the book. That was, that was on there. They got to decide what kind of book. And really, the caveat was, right, pick a book that's your level and that you will enjoy. And we had a, I had kind of a, another option here. I could have introduced a new tool. That could have been something that I did at that moment. But I really didn't want to overwhelm the scenario here. Um, I went to a presentation earlier, um, and they're all starting to like meld together. But basically, the discussion that we had was, we cannot introduce new tech when we're also trying to do something with content, right? Those things can't be equal because it's too much. And the kids shut down, and in my case, the teacher wouldn't have necessarily gotten as much out of it as she did. So I kind of chose 
chose early to pick a tool that they are already familiar with, both the teacher and the students. That way then the students weren't learning a new tool, just a new way to use it. And the teacher also felt comfortable so that she could support the students with the tool as well. And that's why we chose Google Slides. So you might be thinking, okay, so you did a presentation. Well, I wanted to make sure that this didn't just come out as a standard presentation, so we had to put a little bit of sparkle on it. Obviously, the first step was we needed the kids to read the book. Harder step than you probably would imagine, but again, we're working on a lack of engagement. So I came in every week with, to that classroom, and the first few weeks, um, we kind of introduced the project, but I spent a lot of time just talking to students about their books. And I truly am a voracious reader, so I really did love that part. I loved asking them about what they were reading, and they would tell me, and then we would start to kind of talk about, um, you know, elements that they might include in their, in their movie trailer on their book. Then we used a book trailer planning template, and really it was just storyboarding. So um, we kind of explained to kids that in order for their trailer to be um, comprehensive, they probably would want to have between six to ten scenes, and so as they were reading, they were using that template to kind of sketch out, you know, like things that could be on a, a scene from the book. And obviously, as we were going through this, we're reiterating lots of the reading like literacy skills. We were talking about summarizing. We were talking about characters and setting. And we were even talking about things like mood and theme, because those are captured in your movie trailer. Once everybody or a majority of students got through their text or had enough of their text that they could begin to produce some of those scenes, then we moved into Google Slides. In order to give students access to some really great high quality pictures, um, we installed the Unsplash Images add-on. If you're familiar, um, it is all um, royalty free, you can use it in your presentations. If you use some of the other ed tech tools, they also have unsplash images. They're just really rich, they're great pictures, high quality, high definition, and it's beautiful because they plop into your Google slide the exact size of the slide, so you don't have to worry, the kids don't have to like try to resize or make them fit. They're not stretched or funky, they are just perfect. So we installed the Unsplash images um, add-on so that they could pull those images as their backgrounds. Okay, we kind of focused on that. And that's kind of where each, the, each scene, which was a slide, each slide was a scene, the first step was going and finding an Unsplash image that would be the scene setter, right? And it sometimes was actually a setting, but you'll see, I'm going to show you some examples. Sometimes it was it was not just a location, right? Setting is not always a geographical location. So students got to think outside of the box about how to tell that story through these backgrounds. So the next step, we have our six to 10 slides that are our scenes. And obviously you could 100% manage your expectations here with your different students, right? You could you could differentiate here. You can also differentiate the number of slides for how young or how old. I did this project as young as second grade. They also made a book trailer. They only had three scenes, beginning, middle, end. So that's some a way that this project could get modified to meet your learners. We set next into adding objects. So these are the things that are gonna be moving around on our trailer, right? So it could be characters, but it could be other objects that help tell the story. Um, baseballs and bats that move on the screen or characters um, like animals and things like that. You'll see, again, very, very creative ways, but this is what's gonna be moving. These are the objects that will be animating to create that Film feeling, okay? And just we just pulled those out of the Google Images search that you do right there in Google Slides. Um, we did explain the concept of transparent objects, so that way then we don't have objects floating around with backgrounds. Um, we wanted to, to look, you know, the kids, th at this point, they're already bought in. They are super excited, so they wanted it to look polished and finished. So they were pulling in, they were doing the transparent image searches, and they were finding images without those backgrounds to move around. We spent a lot of time discussing how to animate. Um, and they did a lot of trial and error. So they would add an object and they would explore, like what does it mean to fly in? Is that the look I was going for? No, I actually want it to fly out. Um, they would move the objects around the slide to get 
that final look. And it was so exciting to watch them. I will tell you, it was really interesting. I did this with fifth graders and I did this with sixth graders. The fifth graders were no hold. They were like on it. They, they were so excited. They were throwing images on. They were moving them, animating them. They couldn't wait. They were so excited. The sixth graders were terrified. They would call me over regularly. Okay, Mrs. Phelps, I want this ball to move across the screen. And I'd say, okay, how are you going to do it? And they're like, I, I don't know. Like they wouldn't try anything without my um, reassurance. And it was so interesting to me to watch that dynamic. Um, so just be prepared. All of them felt comfortable with Google Slides, but some of them were unwilling to, to try something that they didn't know if it was going to work or not. So we spent a lot of time kind of getting through that and having fun um, and being willing to laugh at ourselves. Every time I introduced one of these steps, I would model it and I always would model it wrong or I'd have the ball spin around in circles when I wanted it to do something else. Um, just those good things that you guys do all the time as teachers. You do have to make sure that anything that you animate, right, you, we want it to be automatic because we want this to come off like a movie. So we talked about making sure it was set to after previous instead of on click. We don't want to be, we don't want to be there um, clicking the mouse to make everything happen in our movie. So we set every animation to happen after previous. So that way, as soon as the slide changed, it set off our, our series of events and the students learned how they could drag those animations into the order that they wanted. Other things that they animated on the screen um, could be text. So they might add story components from, this, from there. Um, so they might have text come in. Some students kind of extended the project and they said, what if I wanted to have my voice, right? Most movie trailers have a voiceover. And so students started to use um, some online resources like Vocaroo, uh, where you can record your voice, download it. Um, I will tell you in Illinois, we recently passed some legislation called SAPA, which means that we can't just sign up for services. Um, it has to have an agreement with the school district. So in this particular project, I tried to be very mindful of not having the students sign up for anything. I only wanted to use resources that we either had an agreement with, Google, or that did not require the students to create an account or sign in. So I wanted everything to be able to happen, be downloaded and used without it collecting any student identifying information because we had kind of were on a timeline and I wanted to get as much of this project done without having to, remember, I didn't want to introduce a whole lot of new services. So Vocaroo is great. You can record um, recording your voices so they could read their their voiceover or they could do sound effects, which was really cool. They would download it. Um, if you do use Vocaroo or a similar voice recording website, you do have to convert it. All your audio going into Google Slides does need to be a WAV file. So we use the website convert.io and it, again, no login. You just take whatever your recording was that is a MP3, you switch it to WAV and you can re-download it and stick it in your drive and insert it. Um, again, we had, that was an extra step, but it prevented me from having to have my students make logins. Um, we would insert that, that audio and then set that setting on the audio menu to happen automatically. Everything has to be automatic for it to be a video at the end. For sound effects, if they didn't want to make them themselves, some, you know, middle schoolers are too cool sometimes to make sound effects. So we did find a nice website called Pixabay and it did have um, free options as well. Again, no sign in required. Any of those sounds also had to be converted to a WAV file, but it was really simple. Usually what I would have students do, we'd have a day, they'd find all those, download them, convert them, and then we just made a file in Google Drive where they would put all their sounds so they were easy to find. Um, Depending on your, your school and or district's uh, security issue, uh, how your G Suite is set up, um, we did have to go in and make sure that the settings were on the audios were set to um, anyone with a link so they could hear. That was just the share. Uh, step four was music. So again, we're going big here. We're doing movie trailers. So music was there to help kind of convey the tone of the text. And so we used Ben Sound, another great website with tons of free royalty-free music. Um, lots and lots and lots of free options. And we're talking like it sounds like, like cinematic music is awesome. 
downloaded it, took it to Convertio, and made it from an MP3 file to a WAV file and inserted that. When you insert that into your Google Slides, you have to, again, check those sharing settings so that anyone with the, with the link can hear. Um, you also have to set that audio to play from the beginning, but also you need to uncheck stop when the slide changes. So <laughs> you don't want your thematic awesome music to stop after the first slide when it changes to the next one. Um, you want it to automatically continue to play throughout the entirety of your trailer. So our deck is complete. We have our scenes, we have our objects moving around, we have maybe inserted transitions so we get that cool effect from slide to slide. Um, when we are done, 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 because everybody, the kids keep asking, well, how's it gonna go from one slide to the next? We're gonna publish. That's how you're gonna get your movie feel because when it's published, you can set it to change from one slide to the next. You decide how, how quickly. And I had students that were very intentional. I had one student who found this amazing music and she timed it out. She listened to that music so often that she had her slides changing perfectly in time with the music. It was so cool. Um, and you want to set that to not start as soon as the player loads because sometimes you might have to allow the music. That was a fun fact we learned. Sometimes like the kids would pull it up and it wouldn't start playing the music, but the slides would start going and they're like, it's not right. So we set it to not start as soon as you load the site and that way we can make sure the music and the video start playing at the same time. Once the music kicks on, you can hit play and now it's all beautifully aligned. Um, if you don't feel comfortable publishing to the web or you don't want to, that's totally fine. You'll just have to be the slide advancer. And again, that's totally, that's totally fine. All right, so let's look at some example projects so you can kind of get a sense of how this all comes together. Um, these were made following the exact steps I just shared with you and the exact resources I shared with you. So this is my teacher example. Okay. Hopefully this one has music. Let's see if it'll go. No, no. It's not telling me my music's broken. Oh. Oh, I feel like I should sing it. So you can see we've got our um, unsplashed images. Here comes one of our objects flying in transparent so it doesn't have a weird background behind it. Okay. You can tell a teacher made this, that would be me, because it's wordy. <laughs> but we, you know, we talked through how to make sure, right? We're summarizing, we're making sure that each of the pieces fits the story. We're including important characters, important events. We've got a map here, so kids start to get kind of creative with how they can present. That was my favorite, just talking about like, hey, because they, again, those sixth graders that were really worried and nervous, they wanted to be very literal, and they're like, I can't find a picture of blah, 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 New Jersey. And I'm like, okay, how else could we present that? All right, so there's that one. Man, I'm so sad I don't have any sound. All right, and then this one was actually created by a student.
So I was so proud. Now, that one I can't, I can't even give you the full effect because he did voiceovers, but because of the district of sharing settings, he, you couldn't hear his sweet little voice telling, but he read all those really like intensely. It was amazing. Um, so it was such a great project. It was great for the kids. They learned how to use Google Slides a different way. Um, if you are interested at all, um, let me put this on here. Oh, it didn't go. I, if you see me outside and I will give you the link to this presentation and then you can have all of my slide links. Um, and that way then if you're interested, you can check it out for yourself. Thank you so much.